chapter 1 third part and till now <coughs> we have seen in the first part the story of nachiket the story of nachik that was the first part second part was the greatness of the divine and the third part which we are going to enter today if i get through the introduction <laughs> will be the sadhana part and the first part was that nachiket a young boy uh, of his father who was a brahmin and he was a great must be a famous person maybe a king we don't know but uh, a, a, a man of many means and one and he had done lot of uh, yajnas and he was doing that yajna to procure the position in the heavens the swarga and for that every few years he will do this yajna so as to give everything that he has to all the people he will give away the cows he'll give away the clothes he'll give away the money to all the brahmins and on this particular occasion nachiket is standing there along with his father and the father very proudly is giving away all his wealth and while he is giving away nachiketa nachiket he observes one error that his great father is committing and the error is the father has kept young milking cows for his son and he is giving old decrepit cows who who require more maintenance than any use but with gold studded horns to the brahmins and wanting good for his father not wanting ill to befall upon his father he asked his father o oh father whom will you give it give me to instead of saying dad you are doing something wrong it is not ethical this is isko bolte hain shishtachar we are we in the name of straight forwardness you know arjavam in the name of straight for i am i tell you, Oh, 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 a as a b as b i tell everything as it is and in that hurt someone else's feelings and we move on <laughs> isn't it this is the way he says oh my dear oh dad whom will you give me to he says get now 8 year old boy 7 year old boy coming to the father and asking pulling the lung dhoti and daddy daddy whom will you give me to the father said get away i am busy because there is a big queue of all the uh, brahmins in front of him he said get, go away again he goes again he asks the same question third time when he goes in a moment of anger the father tells nachiket go i give you unto death if some if your parents told you that ja jannam mein what would you have done oh, how can you tell me like that you don't love me and this and that but this young boy 
he said what is that that yamraj is trying to achieve through these words of my father that he has prompted my father to say these words and if my father has said these words my father is my guru my father is my pet you know he is the son of his father and also the teacher because he used to study he was a brahmin he used to teach the vedas and upanishads and everything so he says if my father has said go i give you unto death he must be knowing that i know and i have the capacity to find a way to go to death otherwise he would not have uttered this is called positive thinking <laughs> and he finds a way he finds a way that you have to find out <laughs> because you are all nachik you are all the students and he finds a way and when he reaches the yamlok he sits there he knocks on the door the the the, the guard comes out he says uh, uh, i want to meet uh, dharmraj uh, yamraj he says your time has not come he is not here in the house in his loka he has gone on a tour uh, come afterwards he keeps waiting there for 3 days 3 nights when yamraj comes they say who is this fellow waiting outside nobody waits outside either they are inside or they are in ever or heaven or hell <laughs> they nobody sat, sits and waits outside my door who is this fellow this is sir he is a, looks like a brahmin boy for 3 nights and 3 days he has been sitting out there waiting for you who oh my god and immediately all his ministers they say you have to please call him give him some water do the give him the appropriate uh, uh, respect otherwise uh, a sharp from a brahmin uh, you are also not exempt from it no, but he has got no time but he has come so then invite and find out he calls him inside gives him water he says and asks before nachiket says anything yamraj says dharmraj or yamraj both are same he says my dear boy till today nobody has come outside my doors and waited for 3 days and 3 nights you must have done a intense tapasya and i was instrumental in keeping a brahmin waiting it is against the rules i give you for each night that you stayed outside i give you one boon what one boon ek var var i give you one boon so ask me what you want nachiket first boon because dharmaraj is asking please give ask me the boons what is the what is your first boon going to be all the details are there and in that we uh, uh, so when we are listening to this part of the story before we get into the boons important thing here to learn is that how nachiket reached death what was his approach to his father what was his approach to the commandments of his father what was his mental mental uh, preparedness to carry out the dictates of his father slash teacher that should be our disposition if we are seeking the truth see we cannot be untrusting we cannot be doubting we cannot be afraid we cannot be thinking negative we cannot be thinking i am only 8 year old i am only 50 8 59 i got so much more to live why will i go to death right now yesterday last two weeks ago i wished some someone said swami ji it's my birthday today i said welcome to death <laughs> <laughs> you are one year more closer to death she stopped talking to me <laughs> now i she'll talk to me when i go back <laughs> hey you are because they don't want to hear that but that is the truth we want to celebrate birthdays why don't you celebrate death days see 
Now you find out how to get to death. Is death an event of your life? Or is death the principle of this creation? One of the principles in this creation. That everything that has come into existence is going out of existence. That going out of existence is called death. So, so you find out what else is going out. Creation is going, day is going, year is going, month is going, moon is also going. <laughs> the full moon is dying every 15 days. Yeah. Everything is. Your body is dying every moment. Your breath is dying every moment. Your thoughts are dying. Every thought that you are listening right now, it's coming, it's staying, then it's dying away only to give way to the next thought. Find out how now you find out that is your homework also from there in Melbourne how to get to the threshold of death. Then he will welcome. If you go by yourself, you will you are Nachiket. If you don't want to go and Dharmaraj comes and takes you, then only heaven or hell depending upon your karma. <laughs> <laughs> Nachiket's time had not come, but he reached. So many Mahatmas get there. They, in fact, they conquer. But here the story is, this is the story. So discover this quality within you. Be solution oriented. Don't be uh, problem oriented thinking. Then we come to these three boons. The first boon, Nachiket, Nachiket says, Whatever my father uttered in his, uh, may he not incur the sin of that. First, he wants to make sure because that is where every, what is, what is your ground reality? Who is sitting here? All family, isn't it? <laughs> father, son, daughter, grandmother, sisters, brothers, isn't it? The first thing is that is where our attention is. He doesn't want his father to incur the sin of sending him to death. And he, in the same breath, he asks, and when you send me back, <laughs> my father should not incur the sin. And when you send me back, because anyone who has had your darshan, he's blessed. So when you, by your permission, or when, he, he doesn't say when you, by your permission, when I go back to my father, my father should recognize me the way I left him. Smart thinking. Because he has gone to death. I don't know how many millions, hundreds and thousands of years would have passed in those three days down on there on, down there on the earth. He has gone to the abode of death. See? First boon, Tathastu. Then our, uh, what do you call, Yamrajji, he says, now ask the second one. He says, second one, I think this was the second one, uh, that I should go back, when I go back by your permission, that I will get the, uh, he should recognize me the way I am. Now he says, ask me the third one. Now, after these two boons, Nachiket says, for the third boon, he says, some people say that the soul lives after death. Some people say the soul doesn't live after death. There is no nothing after death. What is the truth is my third question. Yamaraji looks at him. This fellow is, what is that? Chai. Class ke beech mein chai? <laughs> nahi. <laughs> Pani de do, de na do. Chai nahi. Warm water. Uh, garam mat karna, just yeah. vaisi de do. Otherwise, awaj ho jayega. So, he says, he is, Nachiket, uh, he is very happy. When he asks this question that, is their soul after death, or is there no soul after that? Some people, wise people say that, other people don't believe it. What is the truth? 
Yamaraji is perplexed. He is in a knot. He does not know how to answer. Well, he knows. But before he answers that question, he wants to see the patrata. Patra means, is this student qualified to know this, what he is asking? Like you go to someone's house, the mummy says, the child comes and says, Swamiji, what is, uh, is the individual and the God and the creation one? A child cannot ask this question. Mum has chabi lagaya, he has said, go and ask Swamiji. If the question is of the mother or the father, child, child's question will be simple, divine. Swamiji, how do I experience God? Is God inside of me? These simple questions are there. But creation and the God and the Jiva, are they one? This question is not from a child. Because that child cannot think of such a question. So will you answer such a question? You will not answer. Because that mother, mother or father is afraid of asking that question. Ki kahi ye, Swamiji kahenge, kya buddhu question pushte ho? Is liye ko pushte nahi? Ya daan padegi? Bhikshya pe bula aur prashna pushte ho? Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha is being lured by, in short, I am not going to go into all the details, Yamaraji lures him, tempts him. He says, son, what are you going to do with this knowledge? It is very difficult even for the gods to know if there is soul after death or uh, there is no soul after death. Meaning, is there life after death or there is no life after that? Even the gods cannot know. Why gods cannot know? Because God never dies. How can he know? <laughs> they are locked in the position forever and ever and ever. They are Amritat, Amrit pi hai na unhane chakha hai. All the gods, they got the Amrit from Mohini. So they don't die. So they don't know what is after death. Because they have never died. <laughs> he says, yeah, that's... Uh, if, if even gods don't know what is after death, whether life is there after death, I want to know that only. He says, come on man, you ask me anything else. It's very difficult question. Uh, I will give you the lordship of uh, all the worlds. I'll give you uh, all the wealth that you can imagine and not imagine. I'll make you, I'll give you all the wealth and all the joys and as long as you want to live. What do you say? Will that give me all this? Will it give me the answer? Is there life after death or not that? Okay, I'll give you. You're a young boy. You're going to grow up. You'll be teenage and you will be youth. And I'll give you all the apsaras to satisfy your desires. And they will come with their palaces. They'll come with their horses and chariots. And they will come with their innumerable number of maids. Does that answer my question? Yamraj. And like this, he gives, keeps tempting him for a few other things. Eventually, Yamraj gives up. And he is so fascinated by this young kid stand, sitting in front, standing in front of him because he's sitting down there on the floor. He says, son, first before he says that, he gives him a mala, a, 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 a multi-flowered mala. He says, from today onwards, I gave you three boons, I give you the fourth boon, extra. Because till now, I have never come across a student who is so steadfast in inquiring, is life there after death or not? And you, have, you are, at this age, you are not tempted by anything that I gave you. That means your focus, your commitment to the truth, your focus on the truth, your 
capacity not to be distracted by anything that I am throwing at you is awesome. And that makes me very happy to see a student. I am, I am glad to be a teacher. See, when the teacher says the student is great, it's a rare moment, isn't it? And as a result, he says, I feel like doing something for you, which I have never done for anyone. He says, he's just sitting quiet. He says, there is some, what this single pointedness of purpose is, is comes about as a result of Vaishwanara Agni. It is the tapas, where you are focused on the higher and everything is burning away. And what is burning away? Everything that the Lord has offered him, he has not accepted it, it's burnt away. This is what happens in our mind also. When you are trying to focus, when you are trying to do japa, mind is throwing everything <laughs> that it has seen, heard, touched, feel, taste, remembered. Yeah. And if you don't give it attention, it's, it just falls away by the wayside. He says from today, this Vaishwanara Agni will be known as Nachiket Agni. This ability, this Nachiket Agni, we have to, as students of truth, seekers, we need to invoke within our heart. That single pointedness of purpose, that clarity, not allowing our mind to get distracted by anything or anyone or any experience and remaining steadfast. I want to know, is there life after or not? Who will, if you go, I'll give you two, uh, one billion dollars. Don't ask that question. Achha yaar, badi hai. Huh? Here he's not billion dollars. Here he's giving him the lordship of the whole universe for as long as he wants. He rejects it. Yamraj, Dharmraj, he is so, uh, what do you call, impressed by that attitude of this student that he name, renames the Vaishwanara Agni as Nachiket Agni. See? And then he doesn't stop there. Yesterday I mentioned this point. He says, Nachiket, from now onwards he calls him Nachiket, Nachiket, I am so thrilled by looking at you and it reminds me of the days when I was young. When I was so righteous, I wanted to know, I wanted to be the master of righteousness and unrighteousness. I wanted to master it all. I studied the scriptures, I did the, the puja and havan and the, the, in those days the fire sacrifice was there. And through that karma, Nachiket is not doing any karma. Dharamraj did karma. What was the karma? Of fire sacrifice. Nachiket is not doing the physical fire sacrifice. Yet, the fire within him is lit. That fire outside, when it is lit inside, it is called Vaishwanaragani, which has been renamed as Nachiket. Because what is fire? which devours everything, which burns away everything. Anything you put into it, it burns away. So is that shloka related to that Aham Vaishwana No, no, no. So, ha, huh, yes, Vaishwanara is the same, uh, but there we are taking Vaishwanara as the, as the infinite, the cosmic fire. Okay. So, wherever, with whatever our focus, wherever our focus is, Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti, in this Jagrat Avastha, if our attention is on wife or husband or wealth or children or uh, 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 real estate portfolio or <laughs> whatever, that you want to be the lord of the country or the king of the country, you do in enough required tapasya or sadhana of chanting a, you will get it. And this is the sadhana. As I said, in Mandukya Upanishad, it says, A, U and Ma are Jagra, Swapna, Sushupti. But there is, the sound doesn't conclude at Ma. It continues beyond. And that beyond is the Brahman. So, with Om, while you are chanting, is your attention on Brahman? 
द परब्रह्म परमात्मा इज योर अटेंशन ऑन आत्मा और इज योर अटेंशन ऑन द ग्रॉस सटल और कॉजल वर्ल्ड एवरीथिंग बिकॉज ओम इज द फर्स्ट वर्ड ऑफ द क्रिएशन एंड इट इज ऑल इंक्लूसिव दैट विच इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल एंड दैट विच इज इमेनेंट दैट विच इज रिलेटिव दैट विच इज एम्पेरिकल बोथ इज अवेलेबल and he says you chant om and then he gives all the what i have just given it to you in short but he gives a lot of detail about uh, uh, about that and then towards the end of the last chapter that he says that the then he starts that this with this om this om has the capacity to deliver you to the to you you to yourself if you are chanting and contemplating on its meaning etc etc both has to be done if you are chanting it single pointedly the om will start revealing its meaning from within rishis nobody told them the upanishads the vedas they got revealed to them in their mind they, it was a direct download <laughs> from where that answer find the answer where was the download from see so this om brings you to the thresh to you you to yourself and who are you a seeker and where do you want to go to the atman what is this atman then few verses are to- told about atman this is atman is self existing self luminous uh, all pervasive un uh, uh, non reducible etc etc all the nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarup satchidanand swarup and so many two three verses were told about that and it was told that this is it is of the nature of immortality that it is of the that it because it is never born and it never dies therefore it is beyond birth and death his question was answered his question was is there life after death or not now it's answered so first he came to know the vaishwanara mm-hmm. vaishwanara when you uh, when you come to the vaishwanara you see that all this variety that is there when that agni vaishwanara agni destroys all the duality multiplicity that agni as a result of purification which is in within you only in your mind only it gives you presents you with the vision that one alone is expressing as me <laughs> everything there is not you and her and her and him we see manyness but there is only one each one of you is saying i was born and i am going to, one day i will die you also say i was born one day and i was you say i am elder you are younger this is all on account of the conditionings that you have atma is unconditioned therefore it is unborn and undying it cannot come under the purview of desha kala vastu time space and objectivity and om has the capacity to deliver you there what if we chant om namah shivaya ha ah, you will go to shiva yesterday we explained isn't it shiva is the power of is the destructive principle now if you take lord shiva as the ultimate then no problem but if in your mind you have read the stories and you stay at only a relative understanding of lord shiva then it will go only up till there but again understand om namah shivaya om shri gurubhyo namaha om namo narayanaya every mantra begins with om salutations to that om and that expression of om is shiva that expression of om is narayana that expression of om is om gam ganapate namaha is <laughs> our ganesh bhagwan and this way those who have done the chanting to and taken it to its logical conclusion what is that vaikhari madhyama pashyanti para when it is reducing from gross to subtle to causal to transcendental as it is going your mantra 
ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम स्लोली 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 इफ योर गोल इज क्लियर देन राम विल गो अवे श्री विल गो अवे जय जय विल गो अवे ओनली ओम विल रिमेन बाय आउट ऑफ ओम ओनली ऑल द वर्ड्स केम आउट ऑफ ओम ओनली ऑल द एल्फाबेट्स केम और दोज एल्फाबेट्स हैव कंबाइंड टुगेदर टू फॉर्म जय जय राम तो वॉट इज द सोर्स ऑफ राम वॉट इज द सोर्स ऑफ जय जय ओम सैल्यूटेशन टू दैट बट यू कैन नॉट सैल्यूट टू दैट विच इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल सो वॉट यू डू an expression of that transcendental which is ram so you do salutations to him or you do sal- uh, salutation less salutation to the transcendental whichever way you take it okay so this is the way of om now question is here when it says that the uh, till here the the general nature of the atman in the second valli second part of the first chapter of the kathopanishad nachiket asked his boons uh, asked uh, uh, the three boons then om was told ramraj told his story that i wish i was like you and then he ex- did exposition on the greatness of om and how om is self existing there are there is no other way to come to the self a uh, 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 other than this uh, uh, naturally uh, n- natural uh, what is called syllable called om and with this then he says that some people the uh, 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 may may uh, think that this atma when many people have this question they have asked me also swami ji am i atma or am i jeevatma what do you say jeevatma are you atma or are you jeevatma one more myth yesterday we were talking about myths of about self realization while going she said swami ji myth comes from mithya वर्ड मिथ्या हैज मेड इट हैज बीन यू नो उसका अपभ्रंश करके मिथ आया है तो मिथ्या क्या होता है मिथ्या मीन्स मीन्स नॉट सत्य मीन्स डिफरेंट वर्ड्स दैट विच इज एग्जिस्टिंग इन इट्स ओन एबसेंस दिखता है पर होता नहीं इट इज इट सीम्स टू बी देयर बट एक्चुअली इज नॉट देयर लाइक मिराज गुड that is mithya so what is mithya everything that you can experience or not experience everything is mithya if you have a thought about anything it is mithya oh my god i know what you are thinking now <laughs> everything i am thinking yes when you come to the upanishads <laughs> you have to bite that bullet <laughs> that everything that you can think of individual or total brahma ji also mithya yes <laughs> oh this whole creation is a mithya yes because if creation is is and reality is you cannot have two isnesses there is only one is there is only one existence so you decide is some people who believe the world is they are called vaisheshikas that's one philosophy those who people who say there is nothing they are what do you call uh, nihilists the buddhists shunyavad those who are uh, devo- god oriented they say ishwara is everything that we are individual there must be one total power which is running the whole creation ishwara they are called devotees <laughs> and yet there are others they say who is that formless attributeless who himself is expressing in and through pervading the entire creation on whom the creation is only appearing as if very few people 
have the have the uh, what you call have the uh, have the integration within to contemplate on that like nachiketa is very few people very few people we always tend to objectify it and in that objective the moment you objectify that you want to experience realization gaya comes in because you cannot experience a realization you are of the nature of realization you are of the nature of realization the moment you want to experience gone then you will look for n number of ways to take support to get to it what i i think i think this god is greater than that one i think he is more powerful than that and then a religion begins my god is greater than your god <laughs> we are not into that we are not into that here the topic the theme of the upanishads is brahma vidya brahma vidya is atma vidya brahma is with respect to the universe atma is with respect to this universe called our what we own <laughs> but they are one and the same just like this is my house space i paid a million dollars for it ye beko pe dewar aur eat ke liye dete ho pay karte ho 1 million dollars but the space which you are occupying and the space which is freely available outside which is infinite the nature is same isn't it you don't say i live in the open space You see, I live in my what eight messenger street. street, eight messenger street, messenger of God, <laughs> huh? eight messenger street. That is my home. Eight. We say this is my home. This body. What is that? Thirty-eight, thirty-eight, thirty-eight. <laughs> this is my home <laughs> because i feel that i am only inside this i don't experience myself outside so we have to change our thinking we have to change how will you bring that change about chant om until and unless integration does not come within what is integration thought word and deed have to synchronize what you think is what you speak is what you act in life and as purification starts automatically the mind it is inherent in every one of us that we want to be happy nobody wants to be anyone who is born wants to be miserable a dog also doesn't want to be miserable a ant also doesn't want to be miserable a mosquito also doesn't want to be miserable nobody wants to be miserable everyone is seeking happiness they want to be happy they want to be complete it is inherent within us and that is what is making us move act eat involve study organize listen to satsang do our japa do our sadhana because we we want to be more than who we are right now and what is the maximum that we can be in life what is the maximum that this house space can be the infinite space isn't it what is the maximum that a space uh, a wave can be the infinite waters that's the number infinite eight for my house <laughs> ah. oh yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> then what is this individual consciousness that i am what is the maximum that it can be it can be the infinite consciousness but don't you see the water in the wave and the infinite waters are already the same the space inside the house and the space outsides are already the same the consciousness in this body and the infinite consciousness the rule says should be the same or and are the same then why am i if i am understanding that is the same space if i am understanding is the same water why i make it difficult for myself that i have to seek the consciousness i have to expand So till this thing is, how will this happen? Chant Om, do your sadhana, understand the nature of Om. The Om is not 
known by om nahi sorry the atma is not known by logic atma is not known by inference atma is known not known by through examples atma is known not known by someone putting their hand on your head atma is self known it is self knowing i should say that sat is chit chit is sat existence sat means existence chit means knowledge i know i exist i don't need you to tell me hey you are alive you know <laughs> stupid question isn't it stupid statement i know i am alive but am i alive as body it's continuously dying am i alive as breath it is continuously dying am i alive as my mind it is continuous thoughts it's continuously dying then what is not dying that is self knowing i don't need thoughts to know myself someone said i think therefore i am i think descartes said one of the uh, some 18th century 19th century philosopher i think therefore i am is that the truth is that a right statement i am asking i think therefore i am or i am therefore, therefore thinking happens which one is the true statement first or second second but how do we live as the first one we live as the first one if tomorrow you forget your wife oh my god what is happening <laughs> she will make sure but this is more uh, we want to think of atma we have to be the atma and allow thinking to happen but instead in the name of sadhana what do we do i want to contemplate i want to logicalize i want to intellectualize I, which sadhana is pertinent for me which, which guru is the right one for me which scripture i should study swami ji please tell do the this guru is not work for me i should think i should take another guru this god has the mantra has not worked for me let me go to another mantra words 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 are nothing but thoughts and through thoughts you want to know the self but atma the self is self knowing no thoughts can take you there unless and until you are clear that i am using the thoughts to cancel the thoughts i am using the thoughts to cancel the thoughts you think of sleep every night you think of sleep but when you sleep are there any thoughts left in your mind no so you took one thought of sleep to cancel all other thoughts of the day of the day automatically they go away you remain focused on that similarly we remain focused on om and all thoughts of gross subtle and causal waking dream and deep sleep that is our world they go out of our mind but we must understand where this om is taking us it is taking us to the atma which is self existing which is self knowing now once you have understood this naturally the, the next question comes that is the third chapter now and what is the third chapter this is called the sadhana the we, here we uh, talk about what is the relationship of the jivatma with the atma jivatma now understand the terminology this terminology is of vedanta people use the word soul or individual or uh, uh, and many people uh, even after listening to all the satsangs they are confused about atma and jivatma <coughs> atma we are in the towards the end of the second part of the first chapter we what did we say atma is self knowing then what is jivatma jivatma is the individual individual atma is the self jivatma is the individual self what do you mean by individual self you are individual 
you are individual each one person in this room is an individual each person who is listening is an individual what is individuality self identified with specific conditionings is an individual in other words better way of putting it is when consciousness is expressing through a certain conditioning it is called individuality that is jivatma consciousness expressing through conditionings electricity condition expressing through bulb is light jivatma <laughs> electricity is not jivatma electricity is atma but what is bulb body what is electricity consciousness in that example what is the expression of consciousness through the body light what is the expression of atma through this body life that life is jivatma that life is called soul that lo- soul which is identity you can be two ways either this is this is the natural phenomena which is taking place what is the natural phenomena expression of the consciousness through the conditionings is a natural phenomena now choice is yours whether you identify with the conditionings or remain untouched by the conditionings if you are identified with the conditionings and you say because from childhood you have got identified the parents said this is you. say my body my nose my eyes my shuru se galat bolte hain but same shukdev ji maharaj he came out of his womb of his mother he started walking why he had all the satsang of his father while he was in the womb <laughs> he walked away not identified with his mother nor for with his father only opened his mouth when he gave the knowledge to parikshit shrimad bhagavatam first time he opened after 4 years of roaming around naked but for us instead of teaching the children that from childhood if you tell them you are the atma you are not this body child will learn very quickly because child is a product of whatever you the parents are teaching and you continuously rub it into him rub it into him rub it into him or her they will start it will remain with them for the rest of their life but instead we make them you say oh, they, what does a small child say uh, 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 swami wants to wear shoes now and we give him one swami ji bada hai raja maharaj bol nahi sakta i want to wear shoes now why you, why do you say swami wants to wear shoes now because they see themselves in third person every child sees themselves in third person but society parents school education system programs them to become identified with the body breath mind and effect and now after growing up what do you do you want to undo that has been done <laughs> i am not the body i am not the breath i am not the mind i am not the intellect so पहले से सिखा देते यार अगर यही पहुंचना करना था तो सी अनदर डेफिनेशन ऑफ ओम बिफोर आई डोंट थिंक वी विल बी एबल नो देर इज स्टिल टाइम सो अनदर डेफिनेशन ऑफ सोल अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज शंकराचार्य सेज इज कॉन्शियसनेस आइडेंटिफाइड विद मेमरीज इज इक्वल टू सोल जीवात्मा इट इज दिस जीवात्मा at a relative level relative not absolute and absolute is only atma from relative standpoint when you say that a person has left the body and again taken birth it is this consciousness with memories which has left the body and then again takes another set of body another body and starts expressing through it and when it starts expressing through another body we say it is that prarabdha that person's prarabdha of that body so you whatever you were the soul was now it has come must have left your sadhana somewhere halfway <laughs> or wherever you started from till there you studied or you um, contemplated and you had to continue your journey so that is happening through this body 
Now, till where you take to the, take this, use this body, use this breath, use this mind, use this intellect to come to the Atman. Then the story is over. But if you choose to remain objective and remain identified not only with this body, but also with the world, which is an extension of this body and senses and mind, then you have to face the consequences of that. See, But you have to determine as an individual, what is your end game? Before you breathe your last, if that is the last, if it happens today, right now, in next moment, so be it. But what is your end game? Why are you here? What do you want in your from your life? See, what do you want from your life? Are you here to maintain relationships? Are you here to be a good father? Are you here to be a good, uh, uh, what do you call, sevak of the society? Are you here uh, to revel in your past? Are you here to do practices to know the truth? Or are you truth here and now while you are practicing? Let the mind practice recognize that the truth is here and now that is the atman so if this upanishads make this distinctly clear they do not allow you to beat about the bush idhar udhar se nahi nahi aise pakad lo abhi asan kar lo abhi pranayam kar lo abhi you read the story of the gods then you come to na 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 they bhagwan is the, the dharmaraj yamraj he is giving it straight. This is what Atma is. Now in the third chapter, am I the Atma or the Jeeva Atma? If I am the Jeeva Atma, how do I recognize I am the Atma? How do I recognize I am the Atma? The third Balli, the third part of the first chapter is called as the Sadhana. And here, the individual, the Jeeva Atma, by nature is expanding, by nature is excelling, excelling. If my, if, when, when my eyes started, I couldn't see clearly once upon a time, immediately I want to correct it. And we want to be more than who we are in any given situation. It is an inborn, <laughs> because intrinsically we are perfect and when we are identified with this body we are seeking perfection in our job in our relationships in our vision in our hunger uh, perfection of hunger uh, satiation of hunger desire is a sign of imperfection satisfaction or desire is perfect contentment but temporary so am i have I oriented my search? Have I oriented my, uh, my uh, um, what do you call, myself to that which can give me unabated, undiluted, un constant happiness, constant contentment? Have I oriented my, my mind towards that? To bring your attention to that, the end of the first, second part was there, Atman. But you are not feeling that. You know, okay, that is the goal. And I am that. But I don't feel that. I don't feel that I am the Atman. I still feel I am the individual. Now the third part begins to explain that. Uh, and here, the, the two, the universal and the individual soul is talked about. So here he says, Trutiyavalli Prata Ha There are two One who has everything and one who is seeking everything <laughs> Who has everything We are talking the don't, don't, don't be alert He who has everything Who is it? 
Is it Atma or Ishwara? Atma. Atma is all that there is. Ishwara is who has everything without doing anything. And Jiva is he who doesn't have anything but he keeps doing. This is us, isn't it? So these two are being talked about now. So here he says, Rutam Pibanta Vitasya Yasya Vallayaha Sambandha. And with these words, the first words, Rutam Pibantau, etc., the third valley uh, is uh, beginning. Vidya Avidye Nana Viruddha Fale Ityu Panyaste Natu Safale Te Yatha Vat Te Yatha Vat Varnite Nirnite Nirnite. He says, Vidya and Avidya are. Uh, uh, the, the, both of them are of opposite nature, uh, but uh, whatever their uh, whatever their uh, result. Remember what uh, our uh, uh, Nachiket asked: Anyatra dharmat adharmat. Uh, the Lord of Death is explaining Atma, and whatever. Atma is not, is anatma, whatever is changing is anatma, but he did not explain anatma, he only explained atma, <laughs> that it is self-luminous, nitya, shuddha, buddha, mukta, swarup, etc. So he says that the, uh, uh, so to, uh, what is anatma, to come to the conclusion of what is changing, what is anatma, for that this third uh, valli begins. Tan Nirnayartha Ratha Rupaka Kalpana. So, to explain this, the analogy of a chariot is taken in this third valley. Tatha Cha Pratipatti hi Pratipatti Saukaryam. And uh, uh, that by taking this uh, analogy of uh, the chariot, it will be easier for to us to understand the position of the jiva who is seeking the Paramatma or the Atma. That, uh, evam cha praptru prapya gantru gantavya vivekartham dvavatmanau upanyas yete and thereafter uh, in this manner uh, when we do the vivek of what is uh, what is worthy or what is, how should I say, what is that which is already attained and what it is that which we are trying to attain. You understand the two differences? What, first one is that which is already attained. Atma is already attained. And what we are trying to attain. Who is trying to attain? Jiva. What is already attained? Who are you? Both. 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 This is, this both is going to be in the first two, three verses. That, that we will see now. Whatever we can in the given time. So, uh, uh, dva, dva, dvau atmanau upanyasyete dvau atmanau uh, atmanau dvau tu atman two selves higher self and lower self jivatma and atma <laughs> these two words were there no so to that towards that the first verse begins rutampi bhantau sukrutasya loke Rutam pe bantau sukrutasya loke Goham pravishtau parame parardhe Goham pravishtau parame parardhe Chaya tapau brahma vedo vadanti Chaya tapau brahma vedo vadanti Panchagna yo ye chatrina chiketa Panchagna yo ye chatrina chike taha together. Rutampi bantau sukrutasya loke. 
गुहां प्रविष्ट परमे पराधे छाया तपौ ब्रह्म विदो वदंती पंचाग्नयो ये चतृणा चिकेता यारी सेज रतम पिबंतौ थी हम व्हाट डू द ब्रह्म विदो वदंती व्हाट डू द मास्टर से who are these masters brahma vidho those who know brahman those who are established in brahman meaning those who are established in the truth the self what vadanti they say what do they say the two who enjoy fruits of their good deeds and uh, uh, deeds they are ऋतंपे बंतौ सुकृत से लोके गुहां प्रविष्ट पर मे परार्धे गुहां प्रविष्ट पर मे परार्धे दैट बोथ ऑफ देम आर लॉज इन द कैविटी ऑफ द हार्ट इन द स्पेस ऑफ द हार्ट बोथ ऑफ देम हु आत्मा एंड जीवात्मा हु इज जीवात्मा एक्सट्रोवर्टेड हु इज जीवात्मा हु इज आइडेंटिफाइड विद द वन फॉर्म who is atma independent of all the conditionings and limitations who is jivatma under the clutches of the conditionings and limitations isn't it which one are you who is at who is the husband who is under the conditioning of wife who is man who is free of wife both are you kaun sa hai tu <laughs> Which one are you? Both are you here right now. Where is our attention? Where is our attention? It's that simple. It's that simple. Are we the light or are we the electricity? Are we the are we the waker dreamer sleeper or are we the one who knows? that the waker dreamer sleeper come and go <coughs> are we the husband father brother uh, uh, son or are we the man man without man these roles cannot change cannot come and go man does not come and go roles come and go in that example man is the constant all the roles are not constant all those roles are with reference to something or someone employee is reference to employer husband is reference to wife father is reference to children uh, son is reference to parents so this referential uh, self it is a it pani de do unko thoda sa nahi theek hai the referential this referential self is also me and the constant man is also me now go one step further behind the atma the constant one is also me the one who is thinking that he is because he is the body that he is the cannot live without breath that he is the thinking person i am the seer here or toucher feeler taster walker uh, waker dreamer sleeper uh, 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 you can keep adding this er er every name that has a er it is an error <laughs> it is an error conglomeration of that is called ego but which one are we are we the error every role that we are playing with an ending with er or are we the constant one decide now to bring this to and to make this clear now we are not talking about atma in this part we are going to talk about jivatma and we are going to enquire that how this jivatma who finds himself at the mercy of hunger thirst senses body urges uh, intellectual convictions notions etc etc this is you didn't create it it has happened you find yourself in that situation isn't it 
how he can wean himself away but to wean himself out of all these uh, 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 all these attachments or conditionings first he has to know what are the conditionings and for that the uh, the, the the analogy of the chariot is taken and that analogy on that analogy of the chariot the entire bhagavad gita is given and what is that bhagavad gita in that i'll give you in short only 5 4 5 minutes is there last satsang in our, in Mer- no not last second last satsang in uh, sydney so the story of uh, uh, the chariot is there story means analogy of chariot is there there it is told chariot has to be for someone who is that someone it has to be a person in that chariot the person who is the owner of chariot in that bhagavad gita the owner of the chariot is arjun he is the individual why is the individual it is my chariot how do we say it is my body if i come right come stand up from here and give you one slap and scream left right and center you will not like it nobody likes it isn't it why we feel insulted <laughs> we feel insulted did krishna ever feel insulted so many rakshasas came from childhood till his end did he ever feel insulted always had a smile acha theek hai beta never but we feel insulted why we are identified now what are we identified with and how do we get out of this identification so the owner of this body is arjuna chariot is arjuna what is a chariot made up of chariot is made up of the chariot body with two wheels the chariot is made up is having in that arjuna story and here also it has horses it has the reins and it has a charioteer who is controlling the reins to take the uh, the owner of the chariot to the required destination correct now if you are that arjuna at this moment and you are sitting in this chariot called the body this is the body the senses are the horses the reins are the mind the seat of the where the charioteer is sitting is the intellect and you are the person uh, the individual the owner where do you want to take this chariot do you want to take this chariot into the world or do you want to take this chariot to the required destination and are you clear what your destination is these horses if the if the charioteer is not strong if the charioteer is not strong suppose there is no charioteer such a person is called what if the intellect is not functioning what does intellect do discriminate if their person has got no discriminating intellect what is such a person called lunatic <laughs> such a person is depressive anxious why the mind is following the reins are following wherever the horses are going and where are the horses going one horse will say oh green grass this side the other will say oh g- green leaves that side fruits that carrots got to go to carrots he will run that way this one will run that way where will the chariot go where will it go nowhere it will not cover any distance and eventually it might even topple isn't it what will happen to the owner of the chariot accident goya so chariot is not reaching the destination chariot even in the worldly sense if you want to reach from melbourne sorry sydney to melbourne and you are in a car it has to maintain the lane it has to maintain the speed it has to you have to be awake <laughs> huh? there must be enough petrol 
then only the car will reach its destination but here in the chariot the the the, the charioteer has depending upon the the strength of the charioteer depending upon the capacity and ability of the charioteer to hold the reins reins means to hold the mind by holding the mind the horses are also under control it is not the other way if the charioteer is weak the reins will follow the horses if the horse does <laughs> the reins will also go and if the charioteer is weak it will slip off his hands and the horse will do what it wants and again accident so the the more clear we are our intellect is, because our intellect is our i should say the more clear and strong and uh, focused our charioteer is he has the required strength to control the reins to in in other words to control the horses the chariot will reach its destination correct now how will the individual the owner of the chariot how will he choose the correct charioteer <laughs> how will he choose the correct charioteer by discrimination so are we allowing our life to be run by wife are we allowing our wife life to be run when life means all activities that are taking place out of this body are they being prompted by the husband by the wife by the children by the world by the money by survival by hunger and thirst by the taste by seeing hearing touching feeling tasting by imagination by god <laughs> or is your intellect very clear that this that you have decided the individual has decided that my chariot is going to run based on so arjuna gave the reins of his chariot to krishna this is the secret of nam jap you give it to krishna or you give it to shiva or give it to ram etc whom are you giving it to are you giving it to nitya anitya vivek are you giving it to oh nahi yaar dekhenge oh, retire hone ke baad uh, uh, we'll contemplate on the truth <laughs> we'll become satsangi is it then whom do you give your reins of your life in hands of is there a higher goal inside us which to which our intellect is submitted surrendered which is driving every activity of our life see how much hard we work in our life yeah, i went to newcastle one lady she says swami ji more husband two sons you are also same husband and two sons <laughs> husband two sons she is working she has to prepare breakfast she has to the child is only 2 3 year old she has to take him to the crash then before going to work she has to prepare lunch and husband purane style ka hai oh exhausted hai puri tarah se exhausted whom have you given you have to wake up yeah or you generate that much energy that nothing is going to cow me down i'm i have the capacity because there is capacity within you when krishna can run the whole world you all krishna is in our heart <laughs> we can also run the whole world because someone was like us and they became saint isn't it <coughs> that ratnakar he was a killer he became valmiki that anguli mal was a, a killer and he was collecting 1008 thumbs of every of uh, travelers till he met buddha instant transformation greatest disciple of buddha anguli mal 
सो थ्रू आई विल स्टॉप हियर टाइम हो गया सो विथ दिस ऋतम पे बंतऊ सकृत से लोके गुहां प्रविष्टा परमे परार्धे छाया तपऊ ब्रह्म विदो वदंती छाया तपऊ छाया तपऊ मीन्स डे एंड नाइट नॉलेज हाउ शुड आई से दीज टू पीपल इन साइड विच यू फील देर इज वन इज द एक्सट्रोवर्टेड आय एंड वन इज द इंट्रोवर्टेड आय दे आर लाइक द डे एंड नाइट बट वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ डे एंड नाइट फ्रॉम द रिस्प फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ द सन बोथ आर एफिमरल बोथ आर temporary both are existing in their own absence same is uh, the position of the knowledge and ignorance because our understanding of knowledge is what by way of thoughts what is the nature of ignorance i don't know and i know where is both of these in the mind both are of the nature of myth <laughs> mithya om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम नेक्स्ट वीक द क्लास विल बी इन मेलबर्न हरि ओम